On today's High Watt Soundbite, we're getting animated. Sibilance is a literary device where strongly stressed consonants are created deliberately. All right, let's do one more just for safety. Sibilance is a literary device where strongly stressed consonants are created deliberately. That was a pretty good one. Let's keep that for now. Well, I love doing voiceover work, you know, whether I'm recording my own voice or another artist, there's just something about the animation of the whole thing. Well, just about every time, whether I'm recording a voiceover or a lead vocal for a song, I'll track that dry signal that comes right off this mic directly to tape. Now, often I'll come up with really cool vocal effects that'll involve maybe analog gear and stuff. When that happens, I track that stuff. There's no question. I like to commit certain kinds of vocal effects when I'm tracking. But when I do that, I'll always record that dry vocal on its own track separately, even when I'm committing other stuff to tape. So for today's session, I'm all set up to do a voiceover a little bit later. And I thought, why not take a few minutes and just talk about some of the practices that I like to get up to when I'm recording something like this. Although we're set up to do a voiceover today, a lot of what I'm talking about could relate to doing lead vocal or, or any kind of vocal recording, really. Now, I'm gonna put the headphones back on and we'll step up to this mic and you can hear that, you know, I've got a lot of compression on this thing. This thing is like hot, heated up. You know, if I bypass that compressor, a lot of things change. I'll take the effect off. So now we're talking about just a straight up dry vocal right in your face. This is the signal that's coming right off this mic. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert a Universal Audio 1176 compressor. Yeah, this has been a real go-to compressor, both hardware and the plug-in version. I just love the sound of an 1176. I think it's just one of the best compressors ever made. Okay, so I turn this compressor on. Notice there's a lot of compression going on. Well, that is exactly what I do when I'm doing voiceover work. I love to like beef that thing up and put this compressor on while I'm actually tracking the voiceover, even with working with another artist. I mean, there's nothing like pumping up that voice in that artist's headphones so that they can kind of play into this effect. I mean, yeah, there's just no question that this compressor is adding some really cool stuff to this voice. And a lot of times, of course, because it's so compressed and it's sort of overdone, I'll work right into that as the artist. I'll feed into that. If I'm hearing that in my headphones, I'll absolutely respond to that and I'll sort of play even more into it. I mean, you know, whether we're recording a voiceover or vocal in a track, one of the things that I've sort of learned personally over the years of recording my own voice is the more animated that I get, the more mouth movements and almost silliness that I get up to in the studio, the better that vocal track sounds just about every time. It's like when you're tracking vocals, you just always almost want to pretend like you're on a stage in Vegas and you're just sort of really showboating. You know what I mean? There's just something really cool that happens with the human voice when, when you get excited, right? When you get animated and a lot of times heavy compression, like I've got here with a slow attack and a fast release and, you know, a really aggressive compressor can really kind of pump up everything about that voice, of course. And if the artist hears that in their mix, then of course they feed into it. So this is something I get up to all the time when I'm recording. Okay, let's go ahead and do a mock-up voiceover. Here we go. Sibilance is a literary device where strongly stressed consonants are created deliberately. Okay, let's do one more take of that. And this time I'm gonna get even kind of more animated, a little bit ridiculous. This works great for doing voiceovers. Just the more silly you get, the better it sounds usually. Sibilance is a literary device where strongly stressed consonants are created deliberately. Okay, I kind of like that. Let's have a listen to this one. So let's listen to it flat for a second. Absolutely no compression on it. Sibilance is a literary device where strongly stressed consonants are created deliberately. See, it sounds cool, but man, that compressor just adds everything to the picture, right? It adds that whole kind of animated flavor. If I play this last line with uh, no compressor, just have a listen. Created deliberately. Created deliberately. 
Now I'll put the compressor on. Created deliberately. Created deliberately. Notice how that compressor is obviously like really accentuating all of the hey, like the classic voiceover movie guy that we're all so familiar with. It's like this amazing ability that he has to kind of turn the air compressor on at the end of every word. Notice that when that guy's doing the trailer, every time he ends a word with, it's, if it's like compressor, it's not like compressor. He says, compressor. It's like they go, they, they add this kind of like air and growl to the end of every word. Okay, well, the reason I chose this text is obviously there's a whole lot of S's going on and absolutely we have to address those. You know, I'm not sure what your experience is, but yeah, I've been doing this a long time and I've not ever really heard a de -er that I enjoy using. I mean, there's just something about de -ers that I don't like. I never have, all the way back to the original kind of Orban hardware de -er, to the most kind of latest and greatest. de -ers can be useful. It's just, in my experience, I just find that you know, even if I'm adding a mild amount of de I just find that it's it changes the color of that vocal too much. There's just sort of a, a flavor of energy off the kind of top end of that voice. The air that's coming out, it is absolutely affected by that, by that de -er in almost every case. So, you know, I'd much rather go into the actual track and do some manual de particularly on the lead vocal. I mean, when it comes to a bunch of background vocals or something, Many times I'll, I'll reach for a de -er if I'm looking to, to kind of settle that world down. But more often than not, when I'm working on a lead, that powerful upfront in your face vocal, yeah, I'll pretty much never put a de -er on that track. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna manually de -es. So I get up to this all the time. Typically what I'll do is I'll just make my window a lot larger. And if I'm listening to this very first line, sibilance, well, I know that I gotta deal with sibilance right out of the gate, I got a big S, right? Well, more often than not, I'll just take my, my cursor here and I'll just like literally do a little boom. Sibilance. That's a little too much, obviously, but boom. Sibilance is a literary device where strong. Sibilance is a lit. Sibilance is a literary. Sibilance is a. And I'll go and do another one right here. There's boom. I'll just kind of go in and start. This is a liter. Sibilance is a literary device where strongly stressed consonant. Sibilance is a literary device. So pretty easy, right? You just, I just literally go in and I make, you know, there's nothing too scientific about it. I just get in there and I start making little carvings in the, for those S's. Strongly, or strongly stress cons. Another little S issue there. And even one right there, I'll do this. Or strongly stress consonant, or strongly stress consonants are, or strongly stressed consonants are created deliberately. Or strongly stressed consonants are created. Or strongly stressed consonants are created deliberately. Or strongly stressed consonants are created. Or strongly. So that's often what I'll do is I'll sort of dive into these tracks and I'll manually DS and I'll usually go a little heavier than I than I sort of need to. And then very often I'll just come back and I'll just kind of back off a little bit of that DSing, just like I did now. Or strongly stressed consonants are... You know, if I go to my mix window, which I rarely do, but if I if I show up this mix window, you'll see just the kind of moves that are going on. Sibilance is a literary device where strongly stressed consonants are created deliberately. The, the movements that you see on the fader, they almost don't make any sense because, I, I mean, you're literally going in and, and making such a radical fast move that faders, like mechanical faders and stuff, they can't even keep up. They're not even capable of moving that fast, right? So don't use the visual reference of your, of your fader to use. Just use your ears, of course. Like I say, those de -essers, even in the mildest case, I find them to just kind of kill the voice too much. There's just something about the magic of the air on the voice that can sometimes disappear with those de -essers. I'd much rather just let that voice play out as it is and just go in with automation and just quickly, super fast, just do tiny little automation moves to deal with those S's. I'll often put like a stereo effect on that voice. In this particular case, I'm just gonna add uh, Universal Audio AMS RMX 16 and it's got a, a chorus setting on it. Can be really effective for like a spoken word. Sibilance is a literary device where strongly stressed consonants are created deliberately. 
Yeah, I really kind of dig that. You know, it's just sort of a further effort in, in building that kind of animation mode. Adding a big thick stereo effect on the voice like that can really obviously help that out. But what I love about putting that on while I'm working on the voice is that any issues that I'm having with that vocal track, like S's and stuff, they're gonna be much more pronounced when I put them through like a stereo vocal effect, just like we're hearing now. Sibilance is a literary device. I mean, if I turn that automation off and I just let those S's play out the way they are, check out the difference, it's huge. Sibilance is a literary device where strongly stressed consonants. So suddenly we're kind of attracted to the S's. In other words, a minute ago, I wasn't paying attention to them. Suddenly with that playback, it's all I'm hearing is, is like my brain is starting to go focus on those S's because I'm just hearing way too many of them. Yeah, the balance of the S's is just too strong in that track. So by going in and turning that automation back on and having those S's kind of tamed down a little bit makes a massive difference. Sibilance is a literary device. If I just play that opening line without automation, Sibilance is a literary device. And then I'll add my DSing. Sibilance is a literary device where strongly stressed consonants are created deliberately. You know, for years, literally, I would spend a couple of hours sometimes before that vocalist would be scheduled to show up, and I would just dial in really cool vocal sounds with my own voice. I mean, I would just take the vocal mic from the booth and set it up like I'm doing right now in front of the computer, and I would just play around. I'll do this to this very day. I'll just come up with a bunch of really cool effects that, that I find inspiring, and more often than not, your vocalist will come in, and when they put those headphones on and they step up to that mic, and their voice has been really kind of tripped out in a cool way, yeah, you're gonna have a really good response from your vocalist typically. You know, that's just the way I like to record vocals. I really like that vocalist to kind of feed into the effects that I'm doing. So yeah, I strongly encourage you to get up to this practice of sort of over-processing those vocals, particularly when you're doing a voiceover like I'm doing today. You know, when you really, seriously process that voice, lots of compression, you know, like I'm doing here, a core, a stereo chorus or something like that, and then feed all of that into that artist's headphones. Well, just about every time they're gonna respond really well to that. They're gonna step up to that mic, put their headphones on and be like, wow, you know, and it inspires them to just kind of get into it. Yeah, there's no question, this practice will take your artist's performances to the next level.